Okay, so picture this. It's Friday night. You're at a cabin party. The music's going and people are just hanging out. Yeah, yeah. But then suddenly things take a dark turn like a fight breaks out. And by the end of the night, someone's dead. Yeah, it's uh, it's tragic. And we're not just talking about statistics here. This happened in Sugar Grove, Ohio. Real people, real lives impacted. Right. And I think it's important to emphasize that this isn't just a news story. It's a tragedy with real human costs. You know, exactly. someone well, lost their yeah. life. Absolutely. And it affects families, friends, entire communities. This is exactly why we're doing this deep dive. One of our listeners reached out, wanted us to really dig into these two press releases about the conviction of Isaac Pence for murdering Charles Starner. Now, we got these releases straight from the Ohio Attorney General's office, one from August announcing the conviction, and a newer one from September detailing the sentencing. So we're getting the prosecution's perspective here. Yeah, exactly. It's like we're getting a condensed version of yeah. the events, you know, like a highlight reel. Right. These press releases are designed to inform the public about the outcome of the case. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But they don't always delve into all the details. That's the answer. Exactly. Yeah. The behind-the-scenes stuff that makes these cases so interesting. Okay, so let's rewind back to April 23rd, 2023. We've got this party going on at a rental cabin in Sugar Grove. Mm -hmm, okay. We know Isaac Pence, he was 21 at the time, and Charles Starner, who was 22, were both there. Right. And tragically, that's the night Charles died. And what's interesting is this case wasn't just handled by your local sheriff's department. Right. We're talking the Ohio Attorney General's office is involved, along with, get this, Hocking County Sheriff, Fairfield County Sheriff, even the Ohio Organized Crime Investigations Commission, and the Bureau of Criminal Investigation. Yeah, that's a lot of agencies for what seems like a small town case, right? It's huge. And the Ohio Organized Crime Investigations Commission, or OOCI as it's known, they usually only step in when you've got something more complex going on. You know, maybe it crosses county lines or there's some suspicion of organized crime. This was definitely not a simple open and shut case. That's what I'm saying. It just screams, there's more to this story than meets the eye. And get this. It took investigators over a year to put all the pieces together. Wow, over a year? Over a year to finally charge Isaac Pence. Yeah. And with a whole bunch of charges, too. Yeah. Murder, two counts of felonious assault, two counts, which is pretty strange, right? Wow. Obstructing justice and tampering with evidence. Wow. So obstructing justice and tampering with evidence, those charges suggest that he might have tried to cover up what happened that night, right? Oh, absolutely. Maybe he hid something. Maybe he tried to get witnesses to change their story. I don't know. It's really intriguing because those actions can point to a motive, right? Right. It's like, did he freak out? Tried to make it all go away? Yeah. You know, like people do, but it always backfires. Right. But why two counts of felonious assault? You know, what's that about? That's a great question. And it makes you think, right? Like, was Charles Starner hurt really badly in multiple ways? Or was someone else hurt at that party, too? Yeah. Maybe somebody tried to step in, you know? And that just, it adds a whole other layer to this whole thing. Another victim. Okay, so now it's like we're getting a glimpse into a whole other story uh -huh. here. So after a year of investigating, gathering evidence, trying to figure out what happened at this party. Right. <sighs> Isaac Pence finally has to face a jury in Hocking County. And you got to think, what's it like to, you know, build a case like this in a small town? Oh, yeah. Everybody knows each other, right? So you've got whispers, rumors, maybe even pressure on people to talk or not talk. It makes you wonder, how did all that small town stuff play into this whole thing? Exactly. It really makes you think about how this case didn't just affect the people directly involved, but the whole community, yeah. you know? And then in August 2024, the jury comes back with a guilty verdict, guilty of murder, assault, the whole thing. A month later, the sentence, 18 years to life. Wow. Which is, that's a long time. That's serious time. Yeah, it tells you they didn't mess around. You know, this wasn't just, oh, it was an accident. No, this was serious. Right. The judge and jury, they saw this as a serious crime. And, you know, one thing that really stuck out to me in those press releases, it was that phrase, fueled by drugs and alcohol. Oh, yeah. That always makes you wonder what was really going on at this party. Right. Was it just, you know, people having a good time or did the drugs and alcohol actually contribute to what happened? Yeah. Like how much of a role did they actually play? And if it was more than just alcohol, imagine trying to prove that a year later. Right. You've got toxicology reports trying to track down where those drugs came from. That could take a long time. That's a whole other investigation in itself. Exactly. It's crazy to think this all started with a party in a small town in Ohio. Yeah. 
you know. It's just, it makes you realize how quickly things can change, how fragile life really is. It really does. And it highlights those ripple effects that we were talking about earlier, right? You've got Charles Starner, whose life ended way too soon. Right. His family and friends, they're left trying to make sense of it all. And then you have Isaac Pence, who's facing a future that's going to be defined by what happened that night. Right. Whether he meant for it to happen or not. Exactly. It's just a really stark reminder that our choices have consequences. And sometimes... Those consequences are way bigger than we could ever imagine. Mm. But even with all this, there's still so much we don't know, right? Yeah. Like, what was Isaac Pence thinking? Right. What really caused the fight to break out? What was the trigger? And what about that other possible victim? Right. right. We only know about them because of that second felonious assault charge. Who are they and what was their part in all of this? Yeah, it's like we're looking at a puzzle, but we only have half the pieces. Right. We see the big picture. There's a party, a fight, and then this awful death. Right. But those missing pieces, mm. those are the things that could help us understand, you know, the human side of it all. Like, what were they thinking? What was going on? Yeah, and I think that's what happens a lot with these cases. We get the official story, what happened in court, the press releases. Right, right. But all the real stuff, the emotions, what people aren't saying, that's all hidden. You know, hidden, but I bet you it's not forgotten, especially by the people who were actually there that night. Oh, absolutely not. You know, the ones who knew Charles or even Isaac, their lives are changed forever because of this, even if they never talk about it. That's so true. And it's easy to forget that when we're just reading about it. Right. Yeah. We get caught up in the crime itself, the investigation. But there's this whole other side to it. Right. It's people's lives. Exactly. There's the grief, the trauma, trying to put your life back together after something like this and it's those things that make these cases so much bigger than just a news story it reminds us that these things don't just affect a few people they ripple out to the whole community exactly and even if we never know everything by digging a little deeper looking past just the headlines we can get a better grasp on how complicated it all is how it affects real people and maybe even learn something you know absolutely and i think mm -hmm. as we wrap up this deep dive that's what I'm feeling most now. Mm. A real sense of sadness, obviously, but also just how important it is to remember that there are real stories behind the headlines. Yeah. Real lives. And those are the things that really matter. Well said. It just shows that even in a place like Sugar Grove, life can change so fast. Yeah. And that sometimes the most important questions are the ones we can't answer but shouldn't ever stop asking. It's a lot to think about, that's for sure. So for you, our listener, if there's one thing you take away from this deep dive, let it be this. Look beyond the headlines. Think about the real people affected by events like this. And never forget how quickly life as we know it can change in a single moment. <laughs>